Have you ever wanted to make your own mica sprays? Well, then this video is for you. And at the end of this video, I'll also show you some cards that I've created using my mica sprays. Okay, so what you need to get started to create your own mica sprays is obviously some mica powders. Now, there's numerous different brands out there. Uh, I find really any of them work. So just get the ones that you can get your hands on. And of course, you'll need some spray bottles. I've tried a range of spray bottles and I found I need to follow the same steps with all of them to prevent the spray lids from clogging up. However, if you find any brands that you prefer and you think that work best, please let me know in the comments below. Some sort of measuring spoon, so depending what quantities you'll be making, make sure you grab a measuring spoon. I've got a teaspoon, some water, and the important ingredient of the paper mill mixing fluid. Now, this is a really important ingredient as it's the binder and it ensures that the mica adheres to the paper and doesn't just rub off. So in Australia, I found this for only $8 a bottle and I've made lots of mica sprays and I haven't even used it up. So definitely worth the cost. And then to help you get everything into the little bottles is to use a funnel. Now, I couldn't find my funnel, but I guess like any creator, if we can't find something, we'll just make something <laughs> to make it work. So I've just used a bit of uh, leftover packaging that I uh, quickly washed, wiped down and cut, cut out a square uh, from the kitchen and just stapling it to make my own homemade funnel. So super easy to use. And of course it does help if you are making numerous mica powder sprays to have numerous funnels to save you having to wash it between each color. But of course up to you. I just used one and washed it between it. Okay, so first I put in the water as if we put in the mica powder first, it's harder to mix as I find it sticks to the bottom of the bottle. So I start with putting in two parts water. So it doesn't matter what spoon you are using, but I put in two uh, teaspoons in my situation, but you can just put two spoons or whatever you measuring utensil you are using. And then next I put in two parts of the mixing fluid. So uh, the same amount of water and mixing fluid is what I personally find best for my mica powders. And depending on yours, you can adjust that. So, so if you find once you've sprayed the mica powder on paper and it's dried, and you then rub your finger over it and you end up with some on your finger, so it's not fully adhering to the paper, you can increase the amount of mixing fluid. But I found that this proportion works really well and then I just want to give the funnel a clean and dry or use a new funnel if you have one so I'll just go off and give that a wash now you might also realize that I've numbered each of my mica powders and that's just for me to easily keep track of what colors what and then I'll make label the actual spray bottles with the same number so I know what each of my mica powders are to match and I'll write down on a bit of paper where I can buy those mica powders so that I know where to get them from if I want them again. And I'm just going to measure out one part mica powder. So that's one teaspoon for me and that's sort of the ratios that I use for my mica powders. So obviously the more pigment and mica spray you put in, the stronger color your spray will be. And it really will depend on how strong your mica powders are and the look that you're going for. And then I give it a good shake. And to do that, I just put on the lid and shake it side to side. Now I prefer shaking it side to side because I'm just cautious of clogging up the spray bottle up the top. And I'm worried that if I shake it up and down, it will clog up the spray mechanism. But of course, I'm not sure if that's true. That's just something uh, that I feel like will help. And it's really that simple. So we've made our first mica spray and let's give it a go. Give it a test spray. 
Um, but I do have some really important tips around how to store them and keep them uh, and use them uh, later in the video. So please continue to listen to those uh, and you can learn from my mistakes. So there we are, we've sprayed that one. You can still see it's a bit wet, so you can only see the shine, I guess, in sort of areas where it has dried. So when you're cleaning up, I personally find that you need to get all that mica powder out from the spray lid. And I do that generally by putting the tip in water and spraying it in the kitchen sink to empty that out. But I will show you a demonstration of exactly how I do that later on in the video. And that's a really important step to make sure that your spray tip continues to work and doesn't get blocked up. And I find this is necessary for all the bottles that I have purchased. But if you find any where that's not necessary, let us know because I'd love to know. If you are enjoying this video, I'd absolutely love your support to hit the like and subscribe to get some future tips. And remember with mica powders, you can also add them to different things like acrylic paints and texture paints as well. So if you would like to see any of these tips in my future videos, then please let me know in the comments. So I die cut this flower out of the dried mica powders. Now you can see that this mica powder really adheres well. It's all over my hands <laughs> and it really doesn't clean off very well at all. So keep that in mind when you're using your mica powder. You don't want to stain like your nice Tim Holtz uh, glass mat, media mat. I'm not sure if it cleans off that. I haven't tried. I've specifically avoided it. Um, just to be careful, I generally spray it within a cardboard box and that way it's easy to clean up. And you will have seen that when I rub my finger over the mica powder on that flower that was die cut, no mica powder was on my finger. So you can see the mica powder adhered really well onto the paper and that's the perfect mix. So I'm now going to go ahead and repeat the process and make a few mica sprays all at once. So obviously it's much faster to make numerous sprays at the same time. And you can see in my process here, I'm adding the exact amount, exactly the same ratios of everything. So two parts water, two parts mixing fluid, and one part mica powder. So if you're not interested in bulk creating mica powders, sprays then feel free to jump forward to the next chapter but otherwise i'll leave you with some music and show you my process for bulk making the mica powder sprays
Okay, so these are all the colors of the mica powder sprays that I have made today. And so let's have some fun and start spraying them, see how they turn out. So I'm just gonna grab my box and I've just got some papers in there. And you can see here, I'm just spraying uh, each of the colors in here. And I just find this is a really way to keep the mess uh, contained <laughs> as uh, anything that helps in the craft room or keep the craft room slightly tidy, uh, <laughs> it does help. And one less thing to clean up. Now. As I said earlier, this mica powder, I feel like the adhesive is so strong that it adheres really well, which is great for our papers. However, uh, I do find when you use stencils, which you'll see in a moment that I've used this with a stencil, that it does permanently stain the stencil. So if you are worried about keeping your stencils nice and clean, then probably best not to use these mica sprays with them. The paper that I tend to use for this is either watercolor paper, as it does contain liquid and water, um, or otherwise just some thicker paper. So in these examples, I'm using 300 GSM paper, which is very thick. So when storing the mica sprays, all the mica tends to settle down the bottom and that's completely fine. I don't find that an issue. I just gently shake it side to side as showing here in the video on how to mix it back up. And I've just gone to use the spray and now I'm back and I'm gonna show you exactly how I clean the lid. So I just fill up a container with some water. It doesn't have to be too deep. And then I just take the lid off and have a spare bit of paper on hand. And that way I find I can use every bit of the mica powder spray and I'm not wasting any here. So I initially just spray the last bit that's left in the nozzle onto the paper. just like that without any extra water. Um, but then once it starts getting a bit tough and nothing more spraying out, I put the tip in the water and so it sucks up water and sprays out any leftover mica spray. And when I'm starting to feel a bit less tension and like all the mica powders sprayed out, I just go ahead, keep spraying it into the sink until I can see that the spray that's coming out of the nozzle contains no mica powder. And then just put it back in the bottle and that's how I store it. And that way your nozzle doesn't get clogged up. So that's a really important tip. And I did get some mica powder spray onto the sink and thankfully I could clean it off the sink. <laughs> Okay, so now for the fun part, to have a look through all the cards that I've created with the mica powders. So for this first card, I've used the mica powder sprays on two elements, the cogwheel and the happy birthday. So the cogwheels are a bit shiny because I've also put some glossy accent on top, but I love how versatile mica sprays are for everyone. And on this second card, I've used it on the flowers. So I've used two mica sprays and I've painted a bit of the blue mica spray on the back as well. And then just done the purple spray and a bit of the blue spray on top and then die cut it out of the, with the flowers. And then for my next card, I've got the mica powder in the background. So it's really shiny and shines through well. I hope you can see that well in the video. I love how much it just pops through the white. And it also has a really nice contrast with black as a background. So I love having it on this flower as well with the orange and purples. And don't forget if you want more of a smoother texture, you don't actually have to just spray these mica sprays. I can paint with them with a paintbrush as well. And I have a card later on showing that 
if you make any cards or projects with these mica sprays, I would absolutely love for you to use the hashtag chaos in our craft room and share your project so all of us can see your fun creations. This is an example of when I've stamped over the mica powder sprays and I've just used uh, stays on ink. They are very shiny and do resist some ink. So what I find works really well is using any sort of pigment, pigment or permanent ink to stamp over it or embossing on top. So for this card, I've used the mica sprays in the background and on the leaves. And in the background, I've used an embossing folder and used some black ink uh, in the sections that aren't raised in the embossing folder. I also think it's fun to add any water soluble inks into the mix with the mica powder for a spray with a ink and the shine of the mica powder together. That's also a fun variation of the mica sprays. And for this next card, which I absolutely love this design, uh, I've just die cut the flowers twice out of green paper with the mica powder on it and some colorful um, paper with the mica powder on it and just cut out the flowers separate. And this is an example of using the mica powder sprays with a brush, a paintbrush. You don't just need to spray it and that way you can also have a smooth finish as well. And I've done the same here with the blue on the background. And the grass also has some mica spray on it as well. And it really just creates a, another level of shininess to the card. Like with any spray, I like how it's just that completely unevenness uh, to the background. It makes really easy backgrounds. And here I've actually used it on top of an embossed bit of paper as well. And it creates a great feeling of more trees in the background. And for the green section, I've used alcohol inks on photo paper. And I've got a really good video on how to use alcohol inks on other papers that's that's not Yupo paper so feel free to check that out if you're interested and for this card I love that the love hearts got the mica powder sprays so that's all for my cards today and I really hope that I get a chance to see what cards or projects you've created with your mica sprays and remember to clean the nozzles of your Mica Spray bottles after every use. And something really important not to forget, and I would do that straight after using the spray. So not immediately, you don't have to jump up from the craft room, but just within an hour or so. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and I can't wait to see you next time.